course, you come from a, a show business family. Your father was Pat Harrington Sr., mm -hmm. who was... Uh, really a legend in his time who was well, you know I don't well but now see he was a he, very very well known New York entertainer mm -hmm. he was a saloon singer a Broadway um, uh, you know habitu he was a, uh, an actor uh, he did about 15 16 Broadway plays almost anything Merman did dad was in mm -hmm. and always featured you know singer dancer um, it yeah was and had about, a wonderful career in New York was something about your father and the one-liners well, Dad was, um, he uh, learned um, at, on the front lines with a fellow by the, by the name of Jack White, mm -hmm. who was kind of a, a, a ringleader and a, 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 the man who started, really, insult comedy. Jack White at the 18 Club and Dad and a, and a fellow by the name of Frankie Hires were his lieutenants. And the three of them, uh, in the mid-30s through the early 40s, had... Mm -hmm. Uh, had a, you know, had a, uh, the corner, had, had to uh, nail the corner on, uh, on insult comedy at the 18 Club, and that's, that's the place mm -hmm. that everybody went to first experience that kind of humor. Now it's a lot more common. And he was, I assume, a major influence on you. Oh, sure. the business. Was, mm -hmm. it in, was it encouraged? Was getting in the business something he no. wanted for you? No. Uh, his career was, uh, was uh, I thought, was a terrific career. I thought my father had a wonderful career. But uh, he felt, <clears throat> I guess, that it was sufficiently spotted that, you know, he wanted me to get the education and then um, uh, go to work for Continental Can or Omaha, Mutual of Omaha. This was New York. New York, yeah. Yeah. New York met life or you know some yeah. solid and and of course my heart and my instincts and my soul were pointed in another direction but being a dutiful little Irish child I, I tried to, to do what my parents wanted and, uh, where was mrs. Harrington during this time she was mostly uh, in the other room no she <laughs> <laughs> a lot like table three. Huh? <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, Mrs. Harrington was was uh, was keeping the family together. I mean, she was not a show business. Woman. No, she wasn't. Uh, she was a a, um, a, a homemaker mm -hmm. and uh, a housewife, and and she traveled with Dad when he uh, took a national tour, as he did with the Panama Hattie, and he did with um, Call Me Madam, mm -hmm. and one or two other shows. Uh, Mom would travel with him, so she she knew the business mm -hmm. inside out. But she was she was a homemaker. Most of the people who and a great singer, a wonderful singer. What she kind and Dad of songs? would sing. Well, Irish songs. Uh, well, kind of. Uh, you, they did a lot of Irish songs together in great harmony. My father had a great great ear for harmony. Mm -hmm. Um, but a lot of the old time, you know, so mammy, oh mine, below that old Dixon line. It was, uh -huh. you know, that kind of stuff. <laughs> I like that. You want to do some more? No. No, I, 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 I need somebody to do the melody. <laughs> and I don't know it, I'm sorry. <laughs> Most of your visibility, uh, in terms of successful visibility, uh, came from this show that you did. Uh, one day at a time. One day at a time. But... It, I'll come back to that, but if we go back a little further than that, your father died in what year? He died in '64. So he never, he never, never, lived he never to see saw that one day no. at a time. Did he live to see what he would have deemed to be success for you? In Absolutely. 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 He he saw all the success that I achieved on Steve the Jack Allen? Parr show, uh -huh. 1957, eight, and nine. Right. And he saw the success, the early success on the uh, Steve Allen show. And uh, I was very grateful and happy that my father saw <clears throat> my success, uh, uh, my initial success in, in cafes. Mm -hmm. um, he was there when I opened at the Blue Angel in New York City. And that was an important room to, to, to Dad because Dad had, <clears throat> had worked around town at Jimmy Ryan's, the Greenwich Village Inn. Is there a place like that now that might be comparable to, to what? the Blue Angel? Yeah. Gee, I don't know because I, I don't know New York. I, I haven't been there, and it's but nightclub, the whole nightclub industry is just I I don't so know different. what it's about yeah. in, in, any, any longer in New York. Not having been there in a long time, it's not a place that I, I I go back to. I was born and raised in Manhattan, you know, and you know as a young man I was Johnny downtown with the snap rim hat and the Brooks uh, shoulder the natural shouldered suits and and where are those uh, suits now? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. We Irish pass things on, but I don't. I don't know if they're even hand-me-downs any longer. It'd be worth a lot of money, actually. The old natural shouldered mm. Brooks Brothers. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, mm -hmm. um, having done all that and 
come west, I, I, I don't go back. But um, where, what, what was the theme here? What oh, just about? sort of the, if there would have been a, a, a showcase of a room that may have been No, the point was that Dad yeah. did see me. At, he did. At the, the open at the yes, Blue I forget. And he points. enjoyed it. He really mm -hmm. liked that, and he was proud. Pat Harrington is here. Telephone number on your screen at Lamack & Company Live this evening. So pull up a chair, give us a ring, because we're going to talk about uh, one day at a time, which is almost being here with you is like deja vu for me. But yeah, I, you were there. I, yes, yeah, for the last few years of that show, mm -hmm. there was an identity that you achieved from that show. Uh, and interesting about all of you actor people that you work so hard and you become successful as a performer in other venues, but it's not until there's a television success really that people say, oh, sure, I know. The, 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 uh, the fame uh, and what we perceive to be the fortune isn't there until almost that television or film success. Was that hard to overcome or were you, was it a sigh of relief when one day at a time happened? Well, I didn't exactly, I wouldn't say that I had a uh, um, diminished persona prior to uh, one day at a time. The, the success that I achieved on, on the Jack Parr show as Guido Panzini was really mm -hmm. substantial. I mean, that because Parr was very, very hot when I was working with him. He was on seven or eight national magazine covers in a period of four or five months, and I was doing the show twice a week, and I did that for about almost two years, did 85 shows with Parr. So there was an awful lot of excitement and heat mm -hmm. generated by that, and that, you know, I r rode that crest right over to the to the Steve, Steve Allen, Allen show, right. and I did uh, several seasons with Steve and rode that success uh, to the Danny Thomas show, and I did a, a season uh, with, uh, with, with Danny Thomas, God rest his soul. And, um, and that, see, so all of that uh, contributed to a, a rather um, substantial uh, elevated uh, personality. And, and my, so, so my profile, when I, by the time I got to One Day at a Time, was, was reasonably substantial but one day at a time because it was so successful and for such a long time nine years <clears throat> nine years and it was always always top you know top top 20 mm -hmm. frequently top 10 and uh and quite often top five i mean it was very, a really successful show part of the the norman lear uh oh, norman generation saw. of norman of understood that that the mid-70s that was very a very fertile time for a divorced woman, an attractive, you know, uh, marriageable, marriable divorced woman raising two children would be something that this country would be interested in. Well, in America, in. indeed, he was right. Yeah, they identified. Sure, right. I mean, as he was right in in, uh, in all of those seven mm -hmm. or eight or nine shows mm -hmm. that he he came to bat with at that time. Guido Panzini. Now we may have people who are tuning in to watch us who may have heard but haven't seen. I have a surprise for you. Oh yeah. Hey Fiona, you have a, when you have a, you have that clip that we had made up? I have something I want to show our friends at home. I don't know if you've seen this in a while, but we have here, we are nothing if not technically up to speak. Thank you, and I'll, coffee soon, but thank you. How's your water, is it okay? My water's fine. Okay, clip. Me a little sweet and low with the water. <laughs> Steve Allen Show. Oh my God! Say, what September. What's the date on that? September the fourteenth, nineteen fifty-eight. Long time ago. Okay, let oh, me turn on our little watchman. A long here. time ago. That doesn't cover it. <laughs> <laughs> let me put this in the machine. Take a look at this. Pat Harrington Jr. No, actually, it was Junior then, but not now. Yeah, that's Pat right. Harrington. That's right. On the Steve we Allen look in Show. On this? We're going to take a look right here <laughs> and then uh, talk some more. Uh, who knows? Ya and Kigo Omen. Ya and Kigo Omen. Yes, it's written right there. That's Yankee Go Home. <laughs> nice going, Gina. Look, waiter, you, uh... I dig that you speak some English, huh? You got it, kid. I speak English. I learned how to speak English from the United Nations in New York. Oh, you were representing Italy? No, the Mafia. <laughs> Well, uh, at least we can order. I'll tell you what, I think we'll have some veal scallopini. Oh, Steve, you can get veal scallopini at home anytime, darling. Why don't you order something really Italian? Hey, how about this? Calamari a la Francaise. What is that? It's a French fried octopus. French fried octopus? 
Ooh, I don't think I want that. Well, you couldn't have it anyway, sweetheart. You had a party of three, and we just saw the octopus to parties of eight. <laughs> this way, each one gets a drumstick. Everybody gets <laughs> Let me try, Jane. Waiter, tell me... <laughs> octopus for party of eight? Yeah. Let me get rid of this thing. And each one gets a slime stick. That's very funny. Yeah, it's good. The writing, or the writing on that show was the best. Now, now how, how, where did the creation? How did this guy come to you? All right, I um, grew grew up in New York City, in a polyglot, as they say, in a hot, in a what? In a polyglot neighborhood. Uh huh. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> I had a good ear, which I inherited from my my my, uh, my father, and uh, it, it, the Italian accents uh, that that I heard in New York City attracted me. So I I put one together. And, um, and I had an, an Italian accent just waiting for, you know, mm -hmm. a persona. And when the Andrea Doria was struck by the Stockholm, we, I was working in NBC, NBC at the time, we just put together a bit where I became the junior officer on the Andrea Doria. And we put together a whole piece of material. This was, as, I, I, as a salesman, we did this for, for sales meetings and luncheons mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so forth. And I was introduced to various groups as a junior officer on the Andrea Doria. And, uh, and proceeded, we gave him a name, Guido Panzini, and uh, proceeded to have a lot of fun. And then the character kind of got successful, and Johnny Winter saw me do it someplace and said, come on, the, the Jack Parr show, and I uh, did. He was taking over mm -hmm. for Jack for a couple of weeks, and I did, and then that, that got me started. Were you surprised at the success of that character? Sure. When it took off? Oh, sure. Would you say that was kind of the beginning of, of the role that was... That was it. That was my start. Yeah, absolutely. And when you look at the clips now, well, that clip I was already—that was already like a year and a half, two years after uh -huh. I'd been in the business. And Steve, uh, Steve asked his his people, his staff, to get that fellow who was on the Jack Parr show. The thing on the Jack Parr show, the, doing Guido on Parr, because Parr never said who I was. He never said. You know that I was anything except yeah. what I purported to be, uh -huh. which was at that time he became he had he had migrated from being a um, uh, and a, the junior officer on the Andrea Doria to a, a golf pro. He was now a golf pro on the American Golf Tour, <laughs> and uh, we got they got a call. The producer uh, Jack, right now, uh, I forget the guy's name, but he got a call from the immigration people. And they said, we don't have a date of entry or a port of entry for this man. They really thought this guy... Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. We, oh, and no. they said, well, he's an actor. And they said, don't get cute. Okay. <laughs> they sent somebody down. We, we explained. Or the staff explained. The producers explained that I was indeed an actor. Mm. So that was, my, that was the, the beginning. You know... Uh, hold that call. Hold, okay, hold we'll that get to the call. call. Yeah. Next week, um, Steve Allen is going to be here. Oh, he is. I, which I'm very tell him this is not my favorite. I will clip, tell him. I will tell him that you said this is not your favorite. No, he clip. goes. Oh, I love that clip. That's a great clip. That's a wonderful. <laughs> clip. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you have perfected a lot of not a well several impersonations. Want to go grouch, back? Want to start again? Your grouch. But <laughs> can we? Re well, they're, they're still laughing at table seven. They think that's the that's funniest very thing. Funny line. But the the groucho marks. Uh, you know, I, I don't do I don't do uh, voices. I mean, I don't do. That's not what I what I do. Um, but I guess everybody finds that their voice is pitched in some register that is reminiscent, mm -hmm. uh, you know, of, of some star. And mm -hmm. and uh, my voice happens to be, if I just put it in neutral, happens to be in, in the same place that Groucho's voice was in. And so I do do. <laughs> I used to do Groucho all the time. And that's the most ridiculous thing I ever... <laughs> I never said that. That is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. To the telephone, shall we? Yes. 284-8012. Pat Harrington on Lamack & Company Live this evening. Hello, you're on the air with us. What's your question, please? Brad, it's your number one fan, Jay. Hi, Jay. How are you? How are you? Hi, Mr. Harrington. Hi, how are you? What's your name? Hi, Jay. So, so you're doing... Um, Joe Groucho, my next question was, are you the Vlasic Pickle Man? I used to do the Vlasic uh, Pickle commercials, and uh, when I got busy during the, during the series, doing the series, I didn't have the time to, to spend, I, I didn't have any time, and, and uh, Ron Masak began doing uh, Vlasic Pickles, but I did, I, I did the Vlasic 
pickles, I think, for the first two or three years, four years. How do you remember that? Oh, yeah, I remember. I'm still a little kid, Brad. Oh, I keep forgetting I have ties older than this. Yeah, thing. listen, one other thing. We also want, Mr. Harrington, we also wanted the celebrity voices on the Scooby-Doo. Did you do any of the celebrity voices? Uh, I, I've done Scooby-Doo. I don't, I don't think as a celebrity voice, however. I'm just as a character, you know, like a, a moss monster or uh, something. <laughs> hey, Jay, well, thank you. I also like them on One Day at a Time, too, Brad. Thanks thank for you. calling. Thank you, Jay. Bye-bye. Uh, that was uh, in an era of television viewers, to people who had not... Uh, Which was? One Day at a Time. Again, you know, I, I, and not to... Uh, and I didn't mean for this to come off earlier that one day that there was almost nothing before one day at a time because of course there was a career, but it almost puts an actor on the map. One day at the a time power certainly of the was the most in intensive. In it, it, it was by far the most intensive thing that I had done, certain, and the most uh, consistent. Mm -hmm. Sure. You said something uh, I read that I, struck me. I'm lying down over there in the back. <laughs> um, you said once, "Show me a man." who says he has no failures, and I will show you a person who has never taken risks. No, Schopenhauer said that. Oh, you didn't say not that? I attributed no. that to you. Well, no, then forget no. it. It's not so profound. No, I said, show me a man who, what was it? Show me a man who says he has no failures, and I will yeah. show you a person who has never taken risks. And I was going to say, you see, now I used to have this credibility here, and we'd go, yes, I know, they wanted me to shut up and take a call. But... <laughs> The point is, <laughs> you really thought I said that. You, be you really thought I said that. But I look up to you. I respect you, and I felt that. I yes. I had I phoned it in the Schopenhauer. Oh, I mean, you no, did. Don't oh. misunderstand oh. me. Absolutely. I you know. But he it, and I were very close. <laughs> Kierkegaard was very jealous of our friendship. <laughs> True. But the point is uh, that be, uh, an actor. See, you're not going to let me get this out. Sure, I am. Being an actor, one lives for risks. One's life is almost on the edge because you just never know what the next. Not true. Thing. It's not true. Well, then I'll just shut up and go. You to can the be. Uh, uh, many actors are very comfortable. They do. Mm -hmm. They lead from strength, and they do from strength, and they stay there. They stay in that envelope. Risk means getting outside of yourself and pushing yourself. That's really tough to do. Do you do that sometimes? Sure. Doing it more and more as I get older, but it's some, but but a lot, lots of times I won't. I'm frightened. I think that's human. That's sort of kind of in all of us. Sure. Well, that wasn't such a bad question. No. Your curiosity. No, got that's, in the that's way. one of the first ones that really. Ha well, go ahead. Well, <laughs> Two H four. You know, we're almost out of here. And you're Are we really? No, no, oh, no. I've got to be more insulting. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't let you get off this. Two H four eighty twelve. You're next on Lamac and Company live. Hello. Hi, uh, hi Pat. Uh, I just want to say I really enjoyed your work on Wednesday at a time. I just had a question regarding, and you know, in light of all the reunion of uh, past hit shows, do you think there's any chance that uh, you would get together with the cast one day at a time? Good question. And, and Good question. So, or what are your future? I don't, I don't know. I really don't know. I, I, you know, I think that show has had its time, and mm -hmm. and and I don't don't really think that the people who did that show. Would want, I mean, I don't think I'd want to go back and do Schneider again. You wouldn't do a reunion show, oh, I would, maybe? Perhaps a reunion show. That, yeah, a reunion show, certainly. Good question. Thanks for calling. Thank you. All right, bye. It's almost um, in a way that the audiences aren't aware the shows aren't being done, that they don't leave because thanks to the syndication market, the show is seen every day. It's seen more yeah, it's now than it was on the 11 markets, I understand. Mm -hmm. Daily. That's a lot of markets. It's a little security, too. A little. For the people that were on the show. Not a whole lot, though. Not a whole lot. Can, can I? All right. Now, because you're bringing this up. What are up, you prying for? Here's what I'm prying Why are you about. prying? Well, I'm curious again. I'm not going to tell you what I make. No, no. I know what you so make. I you looked it up. up. No, no, no. I, I'm not going to ask. I promise. I make some money. You're getting tense. I'm not getting tense. But... Tense? <laughs> I'm getting <laughs> units! <laughs> you want to I'm getting tense? whole units! <laughs> tense, he's telling me I'm getting! <laughs> You, There's a what couple nerve. romantic in the corner. Units I'm getting. <laughs> Hundreds. <laughs> you want to talk about it or not? No, I no. don't want to talk about it. Change your shirt. Maybe then I'll talk to you. Dress like an Irishman. Like a Protestant Can you're you sitting there. Orange, Ulster. What is this? Can you imagine? My uncle's a, a, a rear gunner in a bakery truck. I'll give him your number. <laughs> I'm speechless for the first time. I'm completely, I'm, I'm, Get that tie it. on, the, when these teeth come out, when I go home. 
<laughs> and you're drinking water, you see. You bet. Now, you, you bet. are, and I won't ask you what I was going to ask you because my, I'll ask you that later. But you've, managed, you've stayed in touch, the relationships you made on One Day at a Time, you've remained friendly with Bonnie, yes. Franklin, and I'm a, Valerie. I remain more than friendly with Bonnie. Bonnie's a real good, real good friend. Mm -hmm. She's a pal. She's a delightful woman. And Valerie, have you seen the new yeah, baby? I, I, I called Valerie yesterday, and I, I got the machine, and I said, Valerie, it's Pat Harrington. I thought you were going to call him Al. Because <laughs> they've called this child... Wolfgang. Wolfgang. But that's Eddie's middle name. Well, but Casey Kasem was here a few weeks ago, and he, they've named their baby, Casey and Jean have named their baby uh, Liberty. Liberty? Liberty. Well, I'll name my next kid Injustice for all. But if it were a boy, it was going to be Justice. So they named the child... Liberty? And Wolf whatever happened to John and Mary? And Pat. What the hell? Yeah, I mean, what is this? Liberty, Wolfgang. I, I, who knew? Oh, track, let's track this kid's career. <laughs> Wolfgang von Halen. I mean, he'll be on the chart 26 months. Right? Let's, I mean, let's try. You want to get breathless? Watch him go. <laughs> right. If looks could kill, I know what you mean. Uh, Wolfgang von Halen. Isn't that something? And your Wonder. kids are named what? <laughs> Mike, Pat, Mike, Terry, and Tressa, right? Okay, Mr. Ordinary, here I am. Good to see you.